Hello everyone, Mike Farmer with Allstate Roadside. Welcome to Towing Electric Vehicles Safely. I'm here with Paul Stevens, and he's gonna help you to update your service methods to service electric vehicles more efficiently and safely, Paul. So one important thing is as you approach an electric vehicle is being able to identify it. And you wanna identify it immediately through its badging. More and more common brands are offering the same model in electric versions. When you want to identify that, so you approach it with a little bit more caution. Another way to identify electric vehicles is through its orange cables and components. And that's where the high voltage is actually traveling back and forth throughout the vehicle. And those cables and components can be in various places throughout the vehicle, uh, under the hood or running down underneath the vehicle. So be aware of the fact they could be anywhere in that vehicle. Once you've identified that it's an electric vehicle, you'll need to approach from the side in the event the vehicle is still running. You know, if it's an electric vehicle, um, sometimes you can't hear them. Uh, check the instrument panel to ensure it's not illuminated. Once you've confirmed the vehicle shut off, remove the keys. There are safety risks associated with electric vehicles. Understanding that there are two different types of electrical systems will help you understand the car a little better. You have a 12 volt system and a high voltage system. So we've all heard of thermal events with uh, electric vehicles. And a thermal runaway is a chemical reaction that causes uncontrolled battery temperature and pressure increases. Um, all lithium ion batteries have a cooling pack that runs between them. Um, if you can imagine a D cell battery, there's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of those all stacked in rows with coolant running between them. Um, and that coolant or gel, if you will, is keeping those batteries isolated and nice and cool. What is your risk as an operator with the high voltage system? So as you've lost the cooling system due to a battery malfunction or some sort of an electrical anomaly, uh, remember that you have stranded energy now. And that stranded energy um, could be a multiplier because if the batteries are not cooling, they're building up heat. And as they build up that heat, it could result in a thermal runaway due to that uncontrolled battery temperature. And keeping that in mind, the potential for a thermal event exists and don't store this vehicle in your shop or beside other vehicles or around structures if it's been involved in, in an incident. So as a manufacturer recommendation, soft straps are usually preferred over chains and hooks. Because if you're taking a J hook and trying to slam it up underneath there, or you're using chain and trying to go to the unibody structure with, with your T hooks to tie it down, it could, could present a problem because if the vehicle has been compromised in an accident, you don't know where that orange cable has been knocked to. And you don't want to snag it with one of those metal chains. So um, utilizing straps is important. Attaching to components of the vehicle that are not going to um, have repercussions, such as pinching that cable tying down to the wheels um, with an eight point tie down or such will also eliminate those problems. Basically what you're looking for here is you're looking to limit your exposure to potentially having a risk related to transporting an electric vehicle. So if ultimately the electronics in the vehicle are shut down, you may need to put that 12 volt power on there to wake the system up. Um, because ultimately if you can't get any power on it and it has no power, you're going to have to skate the vehicle. I would estimate that about 50% of the time you're going to be skating these vehicles. So if you haven't been skating vehicles or you're unfamiliar with uh, skating practices, now's the time to start practicing. You should be building your reference library using reliable sources, such as NFPA or the vehicle manufacturers. Uh, a lot of people distribute information, but you never know if it's factual or actual unless it comes directly from the manufacturer or, or what's being delivered directly to the fire departments. Electric vehicles change every year. And although it may be the same chassis, the internal components can change. And, and, and when they do change, it's nice to have that updated information. And that information is given to the fire departments and posted online. So you definitely should be capturing whatever you can, whenever you can, and storing that information. Remember, your job will always require safety equipment, whether that be your high-vis gear for the roadway, uh, your personal protection equipment, such as your gloves and your safety glasses for all of these different scenes. So let's recap a few things. Electric vehicles may require you to update your service methods. Look for the badging, the components, and the cables marked in orange. Limit your exposure by using soft straps and by avoiding chains and hooks. 
applying 12 volt power can help in a no start situation. Electric vehicles will require skating in most 12 volt low power conditions. Use reliable sources for technical information, such as the National Fire Protection Agency, the vehicle manufacturers, and the Allstate Roadside Fuel Team. Thermal runaway can create a battery fire that a portable extinguisher will not put out. Separate storage for compromised electric vehicles. Place more emphasis on personal protective equipment, especially gloves and safety glasses. Consider adding electric vehicle safety to your regular training program. To be a next level operator, you need to grow and progress in your job. Being familiar with these vehicles and being a study of the vehicles will help you succeed and also have others turning to you for those answers. Thank you, Paul. If anyone listening has any questions, please reach out to us at arseducate at allstate.com. Thanks and be safe out there. This information is meant to promote industry best practices by towing and roadside industry professionals. This information is not intended to serve as a substitute for a company's own training, experience, or judgment. It is a viewer's job to evaluate the accuracy of any information found here.